Morning, everybody. Sorry, we're a little bit late. But anyway, we're in sunny Tenerife. Welcome to Webby Sports Weekly Roundup with a very, very good guest of mine. We're going to kick off the show with shout outs. We've got Rugby League, the Betfred, Rugby Union, the Gallagher Premiership. We've got a boxing review from my pal Johnny Goggles. Bit of darts news, CD Tenerife from my roving reporter Chris Todd. We've also got horse racing fancy last week. <coughs> uh, we got Hendon and Chatham, non-league football club, a little bit of Thursday night football games from last night, and a little bit of snooker news here in Webby Manor on Webby Sports Roundup. Okay, we're back on. <clears throat> right, first and foremost, I'm going to go straight in with the man, introduce you. This is the main man. Chris Todd. Hello. Okay. Yep. Morning, Toddy. How are you? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know, the reason why you're on again today is no. two things. Number one, not because I can't get nobody else, but which you probably yeah, think of. Yeah. But number two, it's because All Fog. Others. Yeah. Listen, listen. Because <laughs> Foggy likes you. Fog, he, I rang him this morning. He said, Webby, you, you got on the video this morning. I said, I got Toddy. He said, Webby, he's the best. So. Well, he, he knows I like the Stranglers, so that's probably the, the connection there. Let me tell you something. You keep on, mate. I will be strangling you. That's for, that's for the short. Okay, thanks. Right, you're welcome, mate. Chris Todd, the Amada, sir. He is the general. He is the number one fan of CD Tenerife here in Tenerife. That's for sure. Right. And he'll be on a little bit later on. He's going to answer all your questions and uh, any comments that you've got to make. Again, just apologise for a little bit late today, but one or two things happen. It's, it's trying to park the car and so forth, and it's very hot. Oh, sorry, did I say it's hot over here? It's going to be 29 degrees today. Sorry, all you people back home that it's raining and windy. You wish you were here, but you ain't were here. You're coming over very, very soon. Right. Now, without further ado, um, one or two show takes I'm going to kick off with. Now, first and foremost, um, Jamaican jock. Okay, I've got to say, that is a fantastic name. A big East Fife fan. You know I'm an East Fife fan. Up there at Bayview, up in the northeast of Scotland. Big shout out to you, big man. Right. Foggy's give me a couple of names to give a shout out to. Hayley Webb. How are you, Webby? Um, Foggy's cousin. Morning, darling. Rob Lee. Glennis Harris. Steve Page. Big Ray Turnbull. Morning, Ray. And we've got to go to um, the few bars. Over in Porta Colon. Always the hopping grapes because they put us on uh, their Facebook page. They post us all the time. And the big shout out to the Oakwood over there in Leon C uh, in South End. And a big shout out to the Ibrox Bar, the Hoops Bar. Talk about those two pubs a little bit later on in the show. And also Big Joe of the Galway Girl. Morning, Joe. How are you? Right. Four people I want to say hello to. Right. If you've had your heads buried in the sand this week, I've done a big survey because it is Rangers Celtic at Ibrox, 12 o'clock on Sunday lunchtime. And I want to know who is the biggest Scottish football club. All right. Who is it? Is it them? Is it them? Is it Hearts? Is it Hibbs? Is it Kilmarnock? Is it Aberdeen? Is it St. Mirren? Sorry, Kevin. No, it's not. It's one of the two bigs, Rangers or Celtic. Right. I've done a survey. I've done, um, I popped into two pubs. The big hoops bar over in Los Cristianos, and I popped into the Ibrox bar in San Etienne. Did a little 11 minute vlog. Now, the one that gets the most views by midday kickoff on Sunday, I will presume, is the biggest Scottish football club. Okay, simple as. So go back yesterday, day before, check on the vlogs. If, for example, you view it, get a tick, there's your answer. More ticks you get, there's your. That who wins, okay? Might get a prize to somebody. Toddy, we're going to get uh, one of his jobs. Have you got yeah. a job? What's that? Oh, yeah, see, I'm swearing now, aren't I? No. Right. While I was in the Ironbox bar, two lovely people from Ulster, Steve and Dawn. Can't forget those names, can I? Especially Dawn. Morning, you two, if you're watching, um, or if it's going to be catch up. Lovely, lovely couple. Big rugby union man. Proper, proper game. So, morning, you two. Uh, there was that was in the Ibrox bar and in the Hoops bar, lovely couple called James and Lorraine from Aberdeen, and he follows Aberdeen, of course, Pitodry boy. So morning, you two. How are you? Thank you for coming on to my vlog a couple of days ago. Right, that's all the shout outs. Now, Foggy told me this morning the Facebook page that we have that he runs for me. 
It's just getting a bit stagnant at the moment. So we need more people on our Facebook page. He works tirelessly hard. He does his job on the side. He does his job for me, okay? It's a non-paying, obviously, job, as you know that. Sorry, Toddy. Uh, Toddy, foggy as well. That's a problem, you two having a foggy and Toddy, isn't it? <laughs> foggy and Toddy show. It's Webby. So, yeah, Webby, and Webby, yeah. And, and Timothy, Jody. Um, So if you can go onto Facebook page and subscribe on there, Webby Sports Roundup. All the sports we have here in the south of Tenerife and my manor. Right. Without further ado. Now, first and foremost, can we see if there's any comments or anything, anything happening? Um, come on, Tony. Lots get... of good mornings from people. Come on, this, um, that's your show text. Chris Todd, good morning. Oh, that's me. Uh, Webby Boom from uh, Get Up Get Up For It, Nick. Morning. Morning, boys. Hope you enjoyed both games last night. Mark LFC. Oh, <laughs> the defending on the fourth uh, goal for Chelsea was incredibly bad. Yeah, yeah, we're going to we're going to fall out, me and you. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Morning, Webby and Tim. It's Craig. Morning, Craig. David Impey. Morning, Webby. Morning. Uh, den, 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 den. All oh, right, okay, yeah. Yeah. What's it might be hot twenty nine in Tenerife, but it's going to be a lot hotter at Ibrox on Sunday. Mon the teddy bears. Yeah, for sure. That's obviously Rangers. Mark LFC, thanks for looking after my manor while I'm away, Webby. <laughs> Is that right? Or no? no, I don't know. He, he's just talking out of the backside. You know that. No, I'm going to sort you out. I am big man. Yeah, go Ian on. Greer, follow, follow, follow. We follow Webby. Oh. Good morning, boys, from yeah. Emma Kelly. Morning, Emma. Morning. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We had super. Okay, well, we just started anyway. So, welcome to my manor here in Laura's Bar here in south of Tenerife in Kalosovaki. Right. We're going to kick off with a bit of sport, which that's what we're here for. And any comments, obviously, down below as well. Uh, and obviously, Toddy, that's what he's here for, to answer them. I mean, so and so forth. Right. Bit of rugby league. It's a bet, Fred. Rugby yeah, rugby league, please, Timothy. Yeah, he's, he's there looking. I'm, I'm up there now, am I? It's, it's like on Sky Sports News. They go there, to there, to there, to there. I'm on there. Thanks. Uh, to, right, we're, we're going to kick off. Hull KR played local rivals Hull FC and ended up winners for the home team Hull KR their fifth Hull a tenth 34 points to 10. My boy St Helens a big local derby always is on Easter Friday they were 4-0 down at home to Wigan Wigan atop St Helens were second and what happened St Helens came winners 12-4 but Wigan did have a player sent off in uh, I think early in the second half so St Helens are gone top and I think um, I'm time. hoping Tim, Tim, I'm hoping Tim's going to put the league, the league up on the top left-hand corner somewhere. Okay, rugby league, uh, please, Timothy. Your left. My left. Okay, Warrington uh, over third. They took on the Catalans, cracking game. Away winners, 32-24 to the Warrington first, Ian. Yeah, no, Warrington were home to Catalans, and Catalans won 32-24. All right. Can you um, can you stop putting in, please? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Timothy. Salford took home, uh, took on Lee, who were ninth and ended up home winners. Salford, 32 points to 22. And the London Broncos lost at home to Huddersfield, 20 points to 6. Now, the bottom two in the league, Castleford and London Broncos, they've both played six and they haven't won a game yet. Played six, won nil. Absolutely love this. So, what's happening to Castleford and the London Broncos? And as you say, you see the table. And say, tell us, my boys. Top of the table. Everybody has uh, not won on every single game this year. Right. Any more comments quickly, Tony? Before we go, certainly is. Uh, Ewan McGregor. No, Eugene McGeever. Morning, Eugene. I think Ten Hag will get the sack from Manchester United. It's on the cards. He probably will, but it wasn't his fault last night. There's no. two defensive errors really. Uh, shocking. Shocking. Uh, morning from Darren James. Morning, Darren. Jones. Get it. Simon Dale, Morning Webby and Toddy and what? Tim and hope you're good fellas. Okay, good. Tony Fogarty, better late than bloody never. <laughs> Stop me fogging. Excuse the swearing. Things happen. Can't part of the car, son. That's yeah. the problem, Danny Cousin. They all want to come on the show, don't they? Yeah. Uh, right, we're going to stay on rugby. Uh, Tim, leave the rugby on. It is a bit of rugby union, the Gallagher Premiership. This is the one I love, being a Gloucester boy, but uh, bad news for Gloucester uh, this weekend. Uh, bottom of the table, Newcastle has not won a game. They took on Leicester, who we beat twice in the last couple of weeks. And uh, they've got a bit back to form. Leicester winning by 19 
points to 13. Northampton, top of the table, took on the Saracens. A massive, massive game. Saracens are champions. All the big boys from South Africa. It ended up Northampton, 41. Saracens, 30. My boys, Gloucester, took on local rivals. Bristol were in a bit of form. We beat Leicester, as you know, twice in the last couple of weeks to win the Cup. And a cracking league game last week. They took on uh, Bristol. Half-time, I was happy. Gloucester were 24-19 up. They just never turned up the second half. It ended up Bristol 33, Gloucester 24. But we've got a few new recruits for next year. So I think you'll watch Gloucester do a lot, lot better next season. Big game on Sunday. So our Harlequins take on local rivals for me, Bath. What a game that was. That game, Harlequins were 40 points to three up. Something must have happened to the Bath coach and whatever. He says, right, you've got to get yourself sorted. It ended up 40-36. They scored 33 points on the bounce. Are you are you um rugby? No, nah, not really, no, no. No, you could be you could be a little scrum half or whatever you can have about it, yeah? Yeah, whatever that means. Okay. It means you've got to pass the ball. Okay. Okay, right. And last game but not least, it's Sale took on Exeter. I didn't think it to go uh this this way, but Sale are basically just below halfway. Plenty of money up there in Sale in Manchester and they beat Exeter by 41 points to five. So if you can see on the table up in the top left hand corner, um on my on my left, you can see the league table. And the league table never never lies. Now I'll tell you what, before we leave rugby union, I'm gonna go on to the women. They're all going, Webby, what? Women. Yes, women. It is the six nations of the women. Okay. I checked it all out. Saturday, Scotland took on France. France won 15 points to five. England, this I'll tell you now, took on Wales. We beat Wales 46 10. And I did watch a bit of that, I must admit. God, they are built like brick. Yeah, I'll tell you. Imagine that. Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> absolutely. And I'll tell you, it was brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And Ireland took on Italy. Now, you would think Ireland would take Italy apart. Because Italy, don't forget, won their very first game in the men's side uh, a couple of weeks ago for the first time in the Six Nations in 11 years. Yeah, they won Italy. I think they beat Wales, I think it was last game of the season. Anyway, it ended up on the women's Six Nations. Ireland 21, Italy 27. Superb, absolutely brilliant. I think I put the table. Did you? Yep, yeah, he put. The, I'll tell you what, this man's quick today. So you've got the table of the women's six nations. He's improving, isn't he? he? I'll tell you what, this man, I don't know. Uh, he must have had a couple of whiskeys this morning. Yeah. Oh, I've got to look over there now, have I? I uh, got to there, to there. When you talk to Toddy, you're on this camera. Uh, you talk to everybody else, you're on that camera. So is yeah. it simple, mate? Oh, is it automatic? Or have you got to press a button to get that one? Okay. No, he's not as good as we thought. No, he's not as good as we thought. So if you have a look at the table, England and France have both won two from two. Right. What we're going to do, we're going to have a bit of a break. I'm going to order yourself a coffee, get your comments in. If there's any sport that I do not show on a Friday and you want to hear about, talk about, or any comments, please send them through to Webby Sports Radio. Come on there, comments down below and do it. What we're going to do, we're going to bring boxing on. It is my roving reporter. He's a big, big Millwall, uh, Millwall fan. Top, top boy. He works and he did it late last night for me. Couple of minutes. My roving reporter, Johnny Goggles, boxing update. Johnny, take it away, son. Hello, everyone. It's me, Johnny Goggles, and I'm back again for another Webby's Boxing Roundup. Last weekend, we had Fraser Clark taking on Fabio Wardley for the British heavyweight title at the O2 Arena, and it was a great battle. Wardley flooring Clark, and Clark coming up off the canvas and putting a good shift in for the rest of the bout. It went to the scorecards and the judges scored it a draw. What's next for these two? Well, Wardley still holds the title and I think it, he won't be in a rush for the rematch with Clark. But is Wardley ready for the next step up? I'm not sure. Maybe it's too early. I've heard Johnny Fisher's name being thrown around to take on Wardley next and that'd be a great fight and be the right progression for both of these fighters. There's some big names stepping up into the ring in the next couple of months and some very interesting bouts. But a number of people were talking about Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Everyone's got a different opinion about celebrity 
fights and his exhibitions. And Mike Tyson stepping into the ring and he'll be 52 years old. But it's happening. I've heard that Tyson will have to go through a number of extra tests, uh, scan his brain and heart, but that's normal and that will be expected. And that's due to take place on the 20th of July and it's been streamed on Netflix. And then the big one, Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. And that's due to, to happen on the 18th of May. We haven't heard too much from the Fury camp at the moment. And I'm looking forward to the pressers and seeing both boxers and seeing them face to face and seeing what they look like. So, I'll be back next week with some build up for next weekend's boxing. And don't forget, if you like what you see and like what you hear, please like and subscribe to Webby Sports Roundup. And it's free. Cheers, Johnny. Thanks for the uh, Rover Reporter for back in England. Uh, great bit of boxing news, Alice. And we've got some more boxing news coming up next week and the week after. There's a couple of big fights. Mike Tyson, 52 years of age. I still wouldn't want to tackle him in the ring. That is for sure. Right, you've had one or two comments before we go on to a little bit of darts news. Uh, Toddy, what we got, son? Yes, uh, get up for it, Nick. 140 Littler, one darts again. B2B and Giza, nine data. Yeah, I've got that. Go on, go on Bristol Rugby. Who said that? Go get up for it, Nick. Same hey, guy. Get up yeah. for it, Nick. One, be. Must be West Country talk. Yeah, so, West Country okay. talk. Okay. What a fight that was. Talking about the boxing yeah. from before. Morning all from League Two leaders up the Hatters. Well, the Hatters, well I did, we were talking off air. Well, the, yeah. the Hatters is obviously, I know, was Luton Town, isn't it? It's, yeah. It, it, but it's Stockport as well, I'm sure, yeah. Well, I didn't know that. I've seen banners saying Hatters. Yeah, I'm quite sure, yeah. But they're at Edge Hill Park, another top of the table. Yeah. With, uh, Mansfield and Wrexham. And Wrexham lost, didn't they? They lost 1 0. One uh, nil the other night, the other yeah. Night, yeah. yeah. So that was a bad uh, bad result for them, wasn't it? That's for sure. Aldershot had a bad result as well. Did yeah. they? Yeah, terrible, yeah. Lost to lost four nil away to Maidenhead on that Friday. Oh, Remember oh, last oh, Friday we yeah, were yeah. playing, yeah. East of right. Any more comments? Not yet, no. No, okay. no. I can put one in if you like. No, don't worry, don't worry about that. If you just tuned in, welcome to Webby Sports Roundup here in Sunny Tenery in my manner. Am oh, I on this one now? People. Am I which one am I on now? That one. I'm on that one. I've got to keep chopping and change. He doesn't, I, I ain't got a Scooby Doo with your head. When Don't, you're talking to Toddy, it's, yeah, this it's this one. Well, I'm not yet because I've got to see you press your finger. I should, you know, press that button, haven't I? Oh, dear. It is what it is. We're all, we're all having a bad run today. There's things that have happened behind the scenes. So we keep it we keep it calm. If you just join me, uh, Webby Sports Roundup here in sunny Tenerife, 29 degrees today. Absolutely beautiful. Subscribe. It is for free. And go on to my Facebook page, Webby Sports Roundup. Foggy does that, okay? And comments down below. Right, a little bit of dance news. As somebody just commented, I've got that down there next. Uh, Luke Humphreys, the world champion. He thrashed Michael Van Gerwen 8-1 at the German Darts Grand Prix uh, early this week. An average of 112.66, three darts. Unbelievable. He is flying. Anyway, every Thursday night, as you know, it is the... Um, the big Premier League of darts. The top eight players play every single week. Quarterfinal, semi-final and the final. Luke Littler, 17 years of age. What bottle does he have to stand on the hockey and throw them three darts at 17? Anyway, he's gone to top of the table, taking over Humphreys. He beat Van Gerwen in the quarterfinals. He beat Aspinall in the semi-finals and he beat Welshman Price in the final and Pricey had a nine darter in that final. But Littler turns it around. Listen, he is as cool as a cucumber. So well done to that young man there. Right. We'll go into this man then. Mm. Yeah, we're going to bring him on. We thought we'd wear the same... Um, do we today? Can't beat a bit of FP. You can't beat a bit of Fred Perry, that's for sure. Uh -huh. Right. CD Tenerife. He's the man. Number one. Called the general. Tenerife Football Club, a marvellous sir. Before we talk to him, I think we've got a little video coming up from the stadium. Tim, do us a favour, put it on for us, let the viewers see what's happening. Hello everyone, welcome to Webby Sports Roundup. Uh, here I am outside the Eliodoro Stadium in Santa Cruz, looking radiant. 
ready for Sunday. Tenerife against Eibar. Eibar up, flying high, second in the league. Look like they could be going up into La Liga. Top scorers and Tenerife mid-table obscurity. But we still need to watch out that we don't get sucked into the relegation battle, sad as that is. Uh, didn't look that way at one stage. We were top of the league in October. Obviously, we peaked too soon, as they say. Um, so we're looking forward to Sunday anyway. Manager Gary Tano is under fire. How he hasn't been sacked yet is beyond belief for many. Uh, but the thought process is we, uh, we only need about five or six points to stay up from the 27 remaining in play. And with him, we'll stutter over the line. If we make a big change now, it could get even worse. And say we lost the next three or four on the trot with a new manager. And then what do you do then? And then we could really be sucked into relegation. We'll stick with him for now. Once we're safe, he's out. OK, thanks. See you all soon. Cheers. Cheers, Tidy. Superb. Nice little uh, little vlog there of City Tenerife up the north. And um, I'm going to bring him on now and we're going to discuss what's happening uh, with City Tenerife from now to the end of the season. Mm. Right, Tidy. Right. Most viewers know who you are by now. Now, you're a massive City Tenerife fan. They call you the general. Mm -hmm. You are the number one CD Amada, sir, fan on your fan base. And. Um, to CD Town, they have a fan, you have a, a Facebook page or anything, and anybody can follow follow the club. Yes, well, we have a, on Facebook, we have a Marder Sur Facebook page, uh, 3,100 members on there. Um, Twitter sites as well, Tenerife Football Plus. Yeah, that's basically it, those two that's the platforms. Yeah. yeah, and you've only missed a few games since uh, since you started in Tenerife, haven't you? What's in them? Yeah, I've only missed one in about 20 years now, and that's because I had a triple hernia operation, so it was a bit difficult. But you, that day. I always remember you went to New York with a family, that was what I remember. That was uh, well, that was the 20 years ago, yeah, uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's so you missed enough. one game in 20 years, exactly. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that's passion. That's passion. Now, right, just give us a bit of an update now. Uh, I've not seen the video yet. Um, no. Now, give me an update on CD Tenerife, how they stand at this moment in time in the league. Is the manager coming? Is he going? And, and why do managers know they're being sacked or know they, mm. but they still stay to the end of the season? What's, what's that all about? Right. Well, the thought process behind it is, as I said in the video, is I think we'll get to the, we need five or six more points to get over the line to make sure we stay up. Yeah. And the, and their thought is uh, if uh, if we change now, maybe it'll get even go even worse, yeah. and we won't win a single game, and we yeah. are in danger in the last few weeks of going down. If he stays, we know he's a professional. We we hasn't done well here, let's face it, but he's a professional, and he will get the the six or seven points we need. There's still nine games to play, twenty seven points in play. Where so did we get him from? Well, he, he's a bar. He's from the Basque country. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can't remember his last club, uh, but uh, he's he he still, well, We started fantastic, as everyone knows, but then it's just petered off various reasons. Um, a lot bit of, of friction injuries, behind the scene. He should have been sacked in maybe December, you know. But I mean, that game against Las Palmas, you came up that night. Yeah. yeah Roy saved oh. him. It was a magic night. We wouldn't swap that match for the world. No, or that wouldn't. night for the world. But uh, really. In hindsight, if yeah. we'd have lost that, he would have probably been sacked around that because we admit we lost all the league games around that because we were thinking too much about the cup, maybe. Yeah, yeah, no sure. excuses, but that's the way it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so he's kept his job and then we've just got, gone. But he should have gone before. But the problem is uh, the owner is based in London. And he's maybe a bit uh, outside all the, th the, the thinking here. So the owner... there. And the, you know, the... So the owner of the football club yes. is based in London. Yes, yes. Spanish? Yes. In area? Is he Canadian? Uh, no, from oh. mainland. Oh, he's from mainland? He's an investor. He's got no big interest in CD okay. Tenerife, but, but he's been following them for many years. But he's an investor. Let's. He, he's made it clear he's here to try and make money, which is fair enough. If we do go up, he, he'll probably sell and yeah. he left in Primera in a fantastic state. So all good. 
the chairman, the president, it's from Tenerife, Paulino Rivera, who used to be the okay. president of the Canary Islands yeah. for many years. Yeah. He's been fantastic. The work he's done off the pitch has been immense with the social side of the club. We've tripled all memberships and uh, the fan clubs have been been yeah. good this but year. But years ago, it used to be sort of seven, eight, nine, ten. But now exactly. Been... Well, <laughs> you said about the, the you thought it was a drop in attendance since yeah, the last I did. time. I did. Still to get 13,000 almost when we're not playing well. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good because years before we used to get eight, nine. We'd need to win about three or four to get up to that level yeah, yeah, and yeah. get up be near the top of the league so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, things are going well off the but we're, st it, it, we're in a bit of a crisis now Sunday will be a, a tense match we're playing Abar who are second in the league yeah. at top scorers we can't score for love or money so no. but it's uh, with Tenerife you know how it is it's probably like Coventry as well We'll either pull off a worldie, we always raise our game against yeah. the big teams, yeah. or we're going to get thrashed, let's face it, because they're so much better than us. If we go 1-0 down, the whistles will start, the pressure yeah. on the manager will be incredible, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. and it could go hor horribly wrong. Yeah, That's football, you know. OK, but, right. OK, Tony. Uh, any more comments before we go on to a bit of horse racing news? you got a uh, thing from Ray Duffy. Oh, squid. thank you, Ray. We'll have a coffee on you, big man, and love to match your good lady. You're better half, my friend. And uh, Foggy's got to go. See you, Foggy. Thanks, my friend. Alan Fraser says, uh, love the CD updates from Chris. Thank you. Yeah. They can't keep the it. faith. <laughs> yeah, keep the faith. Kelso Alan. races cancel for tomorrow for the weather. Kelso. Kelso races off already. God, dear me. Pouring down. There's that big storm heading Is that towards right? UK. Yeah. There'll be yeah. a lot of games off tomorrow, yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. Let's go to horse racing. Um, just to give you an insight, um, a good friend of mine, Lee Sobot, he works for the Yorkshire Evening Post, massive Leeds United fan, been working there for many, many years. He follows them all around the country, does all the various reports. And again, as I say, he's a big, um, he's a big favourites man. So I asked him, obviously, at the start of the season, or start of my uh, vlogs, would he give me a horse racing fancy? His fancy, not a tip, his fancy every week. And he said yes, and we're doing quite well at the moment. Uh, but just give you a disclaimer that in horse racing, if you're a gambler, do not gamble if you're under 18. If your head is in the clouds, you've got problems personal, just don't gamble, please, because you will gamble all your money away. There's only one winner, and that's the bookie. Use your savvy, put a few quid away, and go and enjoy the racing. Okay? And don't chase your money. Okay? Do not chase your money because you will come second best to the big boys. That's for sure. Anyway, last week, Fancy, um, he tipped up Brentford Hope, which obliged for us at 5-2 to two at Haydock last week. Absolutely super. So that's a... Eh. So well done to Lee Sobot. Top, top man. So we're back in the winner's enclosure. Right. This week's Fancy, he messaged me last night. I think Tim's pulling up on the screen. Kempton 315. Yeah, Kempton 315 tomorrow. Sweet fantasy. Uh, it's about 130 joint favourite. He says this is a progressive stayer who has won his last two over jumps, so will be fit for this and is definitely at the right end of the weights. Should have a strong chance of the going in again. Could be three on the bank. So good luck to um, Sweet Fantasy and the 315 at Kempton tomorrow. Right, let's have a look. Few more comments, Webby. Yeah, go on, my son. Go on. Foggy, foggy, bye, bye, by Ray Duffy. Morning, Webby and Tim. Love the CD. Well, we've done that one. Thank you, Alan. Keep following the team through thick and thin and thinner. <laughs> uh, Alan Fraser, Kelso races cancel. Yeah, we did that. Good morning, Webby. You're an excellent presenter. That's from the from, Lord. From Webby. Is that from the uh, Lord? Oh, the Lord. Sorry. He's up there watching me. Cheers, Lord. Uh, Eugene McGeever, it yeah. is soon to be Grand National this month. It's the Grand National, which is a week tomorrow. It's the 30th of okay. April. Yeah, right. um, which is probably with Shelton of the best two meetings ever on TV. Um, again, it's like anything. Um, we'll give a couple of fancies for that. I'll pick a couple out for next Friday as well. So we'll see. It's, it's just a great, great yeah. race. Uh, was it four miles plus in Aintree? Just fantastic. But yeah. Cheltenham. Bit different, different ball game. Why is Cheltenham su that such an important meeting? Do you know, Summer? It's the best jump horses in the world. Number one, number two, all the Irish go there. You've got the best trainers, the best horses. 
yeah. the album just has that aura about it. Okay. it you know, I used to live there with Dawn. Yeah. Uh, and I just around the corner, I used to go all three days. It's just magnificent. The trouble yeah. is now with John, let me see. As many people know, over the past few years, Willie Munnings, who's obviously the top trainer over there uh, in Ireland, this year there was a lot of there's a lot of favourites, odds ons, and Nichols, uh, Twist and Davis says they haven't got the horses to beat those odds on favourites, so they're starting to turn their back on going to Cheltenham races. It, it is a big, yeah. big problem, big, big problem. Uh, right, not I yet, think. and with with the drinks as well, you got I think seven pound fifty for a Ooh. pint of Guinness. Uh, for a pint of lager, a pint of strong bowl, or, or whatever, but I still think that's good. Take advantage of people like yeah, yeah, music festivals, yeah, no, example, no, yeah. of course. They do it, is what it is. Isn't it? So, listen, if you don't like it, don't go, don't, yeah. but, Cheltenham, but you try and get to Cheltenham and buy a book in apartments or a holiday right. let around there around that time. It's nearly impossible. Imagine you're it. talking a thousand pounds a week, yeah. You know, what I mean, it's absolutely it's, it's, it's ridiculous, it really is. So, a lot of people I know they go to Benidorm, they come over here to Tenerife. That's why all all the um, the bars, your hopping breaks, all your places, they're all mega mega busy. But they come in the sun, yeah, cheap to get here yeah. instead of spending silly money through the gate and whatever. That's it's, right, yeah. Uh, and they just love it, absolutely love it, mate. Well, right. I had a little walk around Puerto Colombo during the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah. and the atmosphere was electric. Well, I was uh, work, you know, I was yeah. working the hopping breaks with Martin the Bucky for four days. So that's the hardest four days of my life. It's like five, <laughs> ten, fifteen deep take. Well, I bet just, it was. Yeah. It, Oh, what do you mean by that? I've started already. Have you yeah. started already? Yeah, you started telling your jokes, haven't you? Are you were okay about it. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. You're in a stable condition. Oh, oh, oh. I told you, you didn't go to school to get them jokes, did you? No. Right, a little bit of cricket news, Mr. Retton. But just I had a big phone call from Mark Wiltshire from Cheltenham. Morning, Mark. How are you? Um, loves his cricket, loves his rugby, loves his football, loves everything. Anyway, Mark, uh, he says to me, Webby, it's the cricket season that starts. But it finishes on the same day because it's wet, wet, wet and windy. So um, when then they're all day, these cricketers, yeah. was it 10, 30, 11 o'clock? Then they're all day. The oh, God. It can be boring. That's why I love the, the one day, the one days. But it's a, th it's a th three or five days, three days, in one, or is it four days now? I've, I've lost touch. They keep chopping and changing it, Chris. I went to the Oval once to watch uh, Surrey play on a Thursday. Did you? Yeah. And, uh, God, that was the longest day of my life. I bet it was. It was <laughs> people just walked in and they weren't, they just yeah. read, the read the paper for about the first hour. I'm not the biggest cricket fan, but I do <laughs> like it. I did like it when I was a kid. I, you know, I've met, again, quite a lot of it. And one of my favourite Gloucestershire players who passed away about a month ago, Mike Proctor, who played for uh, Gloucester. And he was South African from Zimbabwe. What a phenomenal player. I, when I used to go and watch him at uh, the Wingate in Gloucester, when he, I think he batted number six, great bowler, batted number six. And uh, when he got out, I'd want to go on because I yeah, yeah. sixes and fours, just fantastic. Just Absolutely. on the plus side for cricket, because I know uh, Wagsy will kill me otherwise. Oh, Wagsy. <laughs> no, I'm... but it's exciting when there's, say, I know, 20 balls to go and they need yeah. 30 runs, yeah, two yeah. wickets left. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then when it goes to the last over, that's pro probably one of the most exciting sports you can Well, Wagsy get, obviously you know. will come on. I'll do, you're doing my rugby reporter for uh, for the cricket. But obviously, we'll wait in a few weeks' time. We'll, yeah. get, uh, we'll get into a few games. He's a big Essex fan, but he's a top, top boy. Wagsy, love you. And I'm, I spoke to you a couple of days ago and I'll speak to you very, very soon. And you could be my Rover reporter for 2024 season, big man. Right. Um, any more comments while I go on to what we're going to what we're going to touch on now? Yes. Uh, morning, guys, from Dominic. Morning, Dom. Oh, wait, morning, wait. All, Orcus Whaling. Orcus Whaling. Morning, Orcus. Yeah. Um, Alan Fraser will be Queen's Park, the Dundee United match tomorrow. Ooh. Scottish Championship. Yeah. Queen's Park fighting for their life. Well, Dundee United are trying to keep the distance between themselves and Wraith Rovers. Well, obviously, what happened last week, my pal Liam Grimshaw, most people know, plays for Dundee United. Uh, home Tannadice it was last week. Took on Wraith Rovers who were seconds. And Dundee United beat them by two goals. So there should have been more. But not putting them top of the table. And they look as if they're going to win the, the championship, win the league, and go up into the premiership for, for next season. And Queen's Park with the bomb. As I said, they're fighting for their lives. So you never know what's going to happen. Stanish Moore is going to win um, Scottish Division 2 and Falkirk are winning um, Scottish Division 1. I think so, they're already up, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah. those two leagues and divisions, it's a bit quieter now. So that's why I talk about Rangers and Celtic in the Prem and obviously a bit of Dundee United in the Scottish Championship. 
Uh, right, let's move on to um, a bit of non-league football now. We've been following all season. Um, Hendon and Chatham Town. A big shout-out to my good pal Ian Allison. As we all know, ex-Arsenal. Uh, played 80-odd times for them. Scored many, many goals. And he is the general manager at Hendon Football Club. And his son is the boss there, Lee. And they're over in June. And I'll be interviewing them. And I'll be seeing them. And I'm going to cut the sherbets and a couple of uh, days of racing with them uh, in June. Now, Hendon took on Beaconsfield last Saturday at home. Unbelievable. And I watched the highlights. And I said to uh, I said to him after, I said, what's the highlights to see? And I said, how did you not win that 9-5? They lost 5-4. It was Hendon 4, Beaconsfield 5. Yeah. How they never won that game, I will never know in a rain of sand. If you've got a chance, go on to it. Check Hendon, Beaconsfield. Make a cut of comments. Say you've been watching Webby Sports Radio and watch it. Unbelievable. Um, on top of that, they took on Hayes and Yedding uh, this week. On Monday, Easter Monday, do you know what happened? Nil, nil. Nine goals on uh, Friday or Saturday. Monday, it was nil, nil. A boring, boring nil, nil. And that's in the Southern South League. And they're ninth in the league, so they're in the middle. Right, bit of chat and town. They took on Grey Wanderers. Um, boss, 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 what happened? They beat them by four goals to one with five games left. And... Right, they start again. Great Wanderers. It was two all away. Then they took on Kingstonian at home on Monday and they beat them by four goals to one with five games left. The second behind Hornchurch, who basically are winning the league. End of. And that's in the Isthmian Premier League. Hornchurch, 10 points and top with two games in hand. Uh, but any more comments, big man? Yes, uh, cricket rewards you for watching. Um, bit stumped by that uh, comment. Does that? What you mean they? He what? Paid. No, I'm he's trying to he's trying to put the jokes in, Tim. Sorry, Falkirk won the first division last week. Alan said, "Yeah, it, Falkirk, it's Craig. Yeah. Hit the thumbs up, please, if you have for, have forgot." Fifty nine people watching my end. Oh, we got fifty nine. Are watching? watching my end, not oh, my end. <laughs> that's an increase from <laughs> last week for sure. We just gave it 35, 40. Yeah. We're up to fifty nine. Super. We're getting better mm. and bigger and every single week. If you just tuned in, Webby Sports Rainer, please subscribe. It is for free. Hit the like button, and we have a Facebook page, Webby Sports Rainer. We need some more people on Facebook. It's just starting to get a bit stagnant. So Tolly's not Tolly, foggy as well. Been working really, really hard. So he needs one or two more people that he can talk to. Any bars that want to come on, if you post us, we will post you. It's as simple as that. Two games last night, bit of footy news. Going to talk very, very quickly on that. So Liverpool take on Sheffield United, uh, beating them by three goals to one. It was 1-1 one, one to the last 15 minutes. They scored mm -hmm. two late goals. With Terry and Simon at, um, on my show on Thursday, Terry said, Webby, we need to score lots of goals because what's going to happen is at the end of the season, Liverpool, Man City or Arsenal, whoever wins the league, it's going to be one of those three. It could mm. come down the goal difference and they needed to start scoring rapidly. And I don't think he was happy with 3-1. Well, he semi-happy. I haven't spoke to him. Not three points, but was it enough? I don't know. I really, really don't. But the big game was Chelsea, Man United. I'm in the three horseshoes last night. Um... I had a few. I was I was half tipsy, drinking my bottles of wine again. Dawn says, don't cook, get yourself a burger. Anyway, popped in a Monte Cristo first, had a couple of quick bottles there. Then I went down to watch um, United. It was very busy inside. Quiz was outside, uh, Julie doing that. Jason was inside, up his backside. They didn't know if they were coming or going. Great pub. That's where I go to watch some football. Yeah, I go in Monte Cristo, then I go into Jason, three horseshoes, to watch other football. And what a game that was. What a game that was. Chelsea, Man United. 2-0 down, Man uh, United. First 20 minutes. And we all thought, they'll win this 3-2. Then what happened? Second half, they come out. I don't know what happened. Ended up 3-2 up. We're thinking three points in the bag for the Red Devils. But then Ten Hag thought, no, I don't want to win this. <laughs> they got a penalty, which I thought was a bit dubious. To make it 3-0. Then I, then I got... Oh, I got cheese off. I've never had some food. And I was having a couple of more bottles. I'm getting half tipsy. I go to the bar to pay me bill. And they all went mad. I went, what's happening? Chelsea scored a late winner. A corner. 
as Toddy says, that uh, it was ridiculous. Yeah, they, it was crazy what they did. So, ten, paid your bill. hey, should yeah, I should have paid me bill. Yeah, I had to pay me bill. Of course I did. It ended up Chelsea three, uh, Chelsea four, Man United three. Another three points down the drain. They got to know how to shut up. Right, a little bit of snooker news. You got any snooker on there, big man? And we've got a photograph of one of our favourite players of all time, Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan. We've got a photograph that you stole from the internet, yeah. Is that all right? Did you... <laughs> I don't steal anything. I just pull it out. I... It's up to you to chop in chain. You take the bottom off and take the top off. Have you got it on there? I didn't take anything off. You just pull it up. Exactly what you sent me. <laughs> Until you learn how to download. Ah, oh, shit. No. I'll tell you, you do my head in. I can't learn. I can't learn. It's too easy. Right, a little bit. So Talking about snook, just at the top there, this van carrying snook equipment yeah, go on. turned over I'm and uh, the load went everywhere. And uh, the queues are stretching back to Armin Yumi, apparently. Is that it? Where'd you, where'd you get these jokes from? Do you, do you, do you swallow a dictionary of jokes this morning and what have you? He hey? writes the dictionary of jokes. <laughs> yeah. Snooker, bigger rocket. Listen, rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan, whatever you say, you either love him or hate him, he's Marmite, isn't he? A big shout out to my good pal Tony, live big Liverpool fan. Hopefully he's coming out in a few weeks' time. As we all know, if you don't listen, if you listen to my show, he's very good pals with Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan, and also good pals with um, Paddy the Baddy, the UFC man, absolute quality. Hopefully I'll meet him one day. And uh, Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan, we've had a couple of snooker cues signed. I've got one in my house signed to me, and I've got another one which we had for uh, for charity, which I do a lot of charities, you know. Uh, since I've done this, these vlogs, I do it for a fight against cancer in Tenerife. Before, when I was in, I was in the world famous Garden Bar. It was Help the Heroes Lions Club. Did lots, fantastic, and it's, it's a feel good factor in it. That's for sure. So thank you for Tony. Thanks for Rocket Money also delivered for signing those cues, and we raise money for fighting against cancer in Tenerife. A um, little bit of snooker news. Let's have a quick look. Pool Championship. Uh, he's in the semi-final of Rocket Money O'Sullivan this week in Manchester. He whooped Ali Carter's backside by 10 frames to two in the quarterfinal. And in the semis today at one o'clock, he's taking on Englishman Wilson. So good luck to Rocket Money O'Sullivan. Is he going to win another tour championship? He seems to win when he wants to. We've got the world championships coming up very, very soon. He's just great to watch. He really is. At a right old age, I think he's 48, I think he is. So, Rocket Ronnie, let's do it again. Any more, um, any more comments, Big Man? Yes, uh, it's Beck, as in David Beckham, not Beak. What? Yeah. Beak? Who says that? I don't know. <laughs> Morning, Webby. Good new section. Webby, what? Women? Oh. Tr yeah. Tricia Slater. Morning, Webby. Morning, Tricia, darling. It's Craig. That, Morning, Craig. That is because everyone loves you, Webby. Oh, thank you very much, indeed. Best yep. sport, sportcast on YouTube by a mile, Alan Fraser. Cheers, Alan. Top Nigel, man. if you don't get my cricket comment, then we need to meet for a pint, and I will explain. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Love the Rupert the Bear hat. Yes, yeah, I do. As we all know about these, that uh, it's me pal um, from Leeds. Nigel, it's probably the way uh, the comment was um, about the cricket. It rewards you because if you put uh, effort into watching it all day. At the end of the day, you've, you're rewarded by seeing yeah. a good spectacle. That's the only thing I could yeah, think yeah, of. Yeah. So you have to put the work in to get the reward. So I think for, I'll meet for a pint, of course. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. How's the manor boss in Boss and Buster, Webby? Oh, uh, the boss in Buster. You know right. Very, very quickly. Um, yeah. Since I did this um, uh, Rangers Celtic a couple of days ago, and previous to that, Dawn comes out to my good lady with Buster, as you know, on a Sunday morning. And the views, she's taking the mickey, taking the pee out of me. Honestly, God, I work hard, play hard, do all this on the TV and on the phone. She does a walk with me. And do you know something? That walk we did uh, in the car boot sale over in Guaza, she's got just under, well, she's got 1,596 views, which was it oh. half eight this morning. Jesus. Just, a, they just watch, uh, just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I do my sports thing, I get a quarter of that. So what is it with you lot? Dawn's stories. We don't have to change the channel. Yeah, no, it is. She, she is fantastic. When she, when oh. she starts, she goes, oh, I don't want to do this. But when she gets going, she says, yeah. come on, would you drop me on? And then next day she's saying, how many views have I got? I says, yeah, you want to know, don't you? She does. She's hooked she, now. She's hooked. She, she's, she's loved, she's put it. Yeah. But I've got more things to do. What I'm going to do, um, I'll tell you who's been helping me. Um, Tim. 
Yeah, well, of course, listen, everybody knows that you help me and give me good advice. Uh, but with regards to the football side of things, Kevin the Scotsman, I know I keep reiterating him, but he's become a quite a good friend. Uh, well, not quite, he is a good mm -hmm. friend, is Kevin. Uh, big St. Mirren fan. Everybody knows Kevin the Scotsman. He's got over 60,000 subscribers. Uh, messaged me most every other day. Webby, just do this, try that, do this, do that. And he gives me advice what to do, how to say in, in titles and so forth. And uh, hopefully he will be over very, very soon with a bit of luck. And uh, we're going to do a couple of vlogs with each other, one on my show and one on his. So um, a big thank you to, um, to me, pal Kevin. That's for sure. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I did on Thursday. When, well, this week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, as we all know, we're talking about football now. Let's go back to Scotland just very, very quickly. Because in the last couple of days, I've had lots and lots of new subscribers, which is thank you very much indeed. It's my passion. Now, I did, I went to the Hoops Bar, saw Steve with the staff. Uh, the biggest Celtic bar in the south of Tenerife. And then I also went to the Ibrox bar. Saw the staff in there. Lovely. I did two vlogs. So all the shirts and so on and so forth, which is phenomenal. 11 minutes each. So a same sort of equal time. And then I did a little vlog previous to that. Put it out on my um, on my channel and on the YouTube. Morning. Um, I don't know who they are. <laughs> Everybody keeps waving. I can't, can't see. Famous now, Evan. Yeah, 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 that'll do. Um, anyway, cut those. What do you mean now? Wave, I, I oh, were they? Okay. Oh, the, it wasn't a wave. It was someone else, I think. <laughs> that was to me. So, it is the big old firm derby on Sunday. And when I mean big, it is massive. 12 o'clock kickoff in the Ironbox Bar. You have to be there at 9 o'clock to get a seat. It is that busy for a 12 o'clock start. Very similar to the Hoops Bar. Now, what I want to do is try and find out which is the biggest Scottish football club in Scotland, obviously. Is it Glasgow Rangers? Is it Glasgow Celtic? Both of them say they're the biggest, they're the biggest, but the people's club, this, that, and whatever the case. Anyway, so all I want to know is who is the biggest. So to find out between now and 12 o'clock on Sunday, which is when we're going to have the cutoff point, when the kickoff comes, we'll see how many views that the two bars have. So if you click on to the hoops bar or click on to the eyebrows bar that means you get a you get a view so the most views then that will prove to me which is the biggest scottish football club so after this show click on there over the next week over the weekend get all your pals your social media send it all around the world and let's make this a bit of fun and i'm going to do this to one or two more bars over the next few weeks i think and then what i'm going to do i'm going to do a couple of walks I know a lot of these other YouTubers, they do their walks for the restaurant reviews and so forth. That's not me. I'm a sport freak. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick on one or two sports bars. Walk around, say, the Galway girl who comes on. They show the horse racing, the football, off in grapes, scallywags, all this, and they all show the footy. That's what I'm going to do. I'm to do one or two little uh, walks on that. And I'll ask one or two people, like Toddy or even um, Simon, who comes on, Big Gooner, and Terry, they're going to come on with me as well, do a little walk, and we're going to enjoy ourselves in the sun. Stop off having a beer. I'll pay for it, as you expect. I'm, I'm in. Oh, you in? He Are is you? now. Oh, he is there. He ain't sport. He ain't a sport man at all. He ain't got a clue. Suddenly, he's, he's interested. Yeah, he's interested. Beer in because it. it's going to be a yeah, beer, in front. So, right. So, that's what I'm going to do. So, get on, subscribe. Right. Again, Facebook. Let's build a Facebook page up for, for Foggy. We've really got to build that up. Let's give it what, uh, what we need. Right. Foggy. To, uh, to, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to switch you around someday. Uh, loads coming in, so that's fantastic. On, uh, Nigel, Rocket, Ronnie, Goat, closely followed by Jimmy. They're close friends. Yeah, Jimmy White. Trump played in snooker club not far from me. Well, Trump is obviously Judge Trump. He's uh, all oh, right. Probably, I it's Donald Trump. He's probably number two in the world. He's a Bristol boy. Uh, oh, right. He's left handed He's a absolute quality. Uh, okay. But with Ronnie, with Ronnie O'Sullivan, he's just a. It's just a different ball game. He is what he is. He he says what he wants to say. He don't give a damn. He really, really don't. He is he is just the biggest and best player that's yeah. ever been on a snooker table. But you as you get Alex Hurricane Higgins, Jimmy White, you know, all they're all phenomenal players. And they're still Stephen Andrews. And they're still going. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. In good. the seniors and what have you. Okay, what you got? Uh Nigel, Ronnie the real deal, bro. Yeah. Get real. up for it, Nick. Ronnie the legend. Yeah. Nigel, yes. Uh 
Morning troops from Alan's homemade vlogs. Morning, Alan. How are you, big man? It, yeah. A bit Sorry. of golf. Yeah. Talk about it a bit later on. Yeah. Any more? Yeah. Uh, it's Craig. So your apology for Troon, you couldn't film or something. Okay. Yeah. Kev's the hardest working YouTuber and the Mac from Nigel. Celtic will win that, says Nigel again. Okay. Cheers, Nigel. Uh, yes. And photo signed for big hour suitcase. Webby. Terry got it at Ch Chayofa. Till next time, visit Wee Bar Tasker up there from Ray Duffy. Uh, bought up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do a watch along, brother, Nigel. I suggest you start filming beach volleyball in Los Cristianos, the Lord. I was going to say to also, Tim, that um, <laughs> is there any sport that uh, anybody follows back home or wherever you are in the world that you want me to uh, pull on the show? Karam because good. Pardon? Karam. What's that? A sport. No need to swear. Just say, well, bless you. beach volleyball by the looks of it from yeah, the okay. Lord. We might, we might do that, won't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but we've got a vlog done, haven't we? I've not talked about just uh, hey, that, yeah, the internet. And, I expect and, he means the men's volleyball yeah. on the beach. Well, he might do, but I'd, I'd, I'd want the women's. Lost Chris, fuck oh, dearie me. Oh. Um, yeah, Tim, Tim, just, Tim, Tim will come with that one. For the sporting right. side of things, yeah. Hey, yeah. Christy wouldn't love you. No. She wouldn't know you're gone. Are you going to be my mm. Oh, you're on the laugh, ain't you? Ian Greer, Greer, at what point should a football manager lose his job? Money, Ian. Ooh. Good job. Good question. It's very difficult. You shouldn't sack too soon. Uh, circumstances mean that so you can lose some matches. Can you chop and change? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there is a time when a uh, change is needed and you need to risk things sometimes, otherwise it gets too stagnant. So. Sometimes, listen, it can be down to money because if you start yeah. sacking managers, they have, they have it in their contract that if you yeah. sack me, I'll, oh, yeah. I want 500 Stupid. grand or, or, or whatever big the football club is. So, well, like Rafa Benitez, Celta Vigo, 9 million he was paid. Uh, he had a three-year deal, 9 million euros in wages and yep. they have, have to pay him off. Yeah. And there's rumours that he was coming back to Tenerife. Rafa Benitez, but we can't afford that sort of thing. Nine million. Yeah. Well, he's got Three. a million. No, no need to pay him at all. No, but well, they're greedy, these yeah, people, aren't they? Of course they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any more comments, big man? Uh, got to go, Mr. Mayor Hall. Hail, hail, keep the faith. Cheers, Ray brother. Duffy. Cheers, Ray. Uh, Warren Seddon. Warren here, big, bo big Bolton fan. Any chance you can discuss League One? And two occasionally, Webby. Well, the thing is, I'll tell you, the thing, a good friend of mine, Paul Smith, who's got a place here, lovely fella, he is a um, massive Bolton fan. He was at Stevenage last week. Um, he hired a box for birthday or something. He's about 12 of them in there. And he was with John McGinley. And I got a photograph. Let me see if I can get it. And I'll show you. Let's see if I can get it. And he sent me a photograph with him and John McGinley. Uh, Trisha Slater says tiddly winks, good sport to cover, maybe. Way to play that. Yeah, that's, keep um, talking, keep yeah. Talking. It's Sean Dyche is an excellent manager and I believe in him. Uh, yeah. That's from sent from his mum. Right, let's have a look. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's uh, I don't I don't like that sort of man. Sorry, yeah. Let me see if I Sorry, can Everton get, fans and if I can get this uh, John McGinley. Um uh, keep talking. Yeah, uh, uh how many people you, watching? You can show that to or not? Minus four. Oh no, fifty-one. That's 51, great. Fifty-one. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Can you? Can anybody see that? No. No. Okay. <laughs> so it's a waste of time. Yeah. Okay. Well, there, there is yeah. my mate Paul Smith and John McGinley. That was it. Steve in his last week. Neil, Neil, Bolton Wanderers fan. Now, if you think of Bolton now, um, obviously on top of my head, you got Pompey. Looks if like they're going to win the league with Derby County. Bolton, Crew Alexandra, they're all there and thereabouts, aren't they? Um, when is the Grand National and will you be doing a watch along? I'll, I will, I'll follow. Okay, Nigel. Well, the, well, the Grand National is uh, a week tomorrow. It's the 13th of April, a day before my wife's birthday. You know what a watch along is? It's when it's live. Yeah, you, you follow it. it. But you're filming yourself, not the Grand National. Yeah. You film your reaction. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah, I know you yeah. told me about it. Yeah, this, that's, that's in another <laughs> era. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting too old for this now, and I'm 67 years of age, you know. She's going to send me a birthday present for August the 3rd. I was born in 1957. Oh, dear. Ah, shut up, yeah. I love uh, watching watch-alongs of clubs I don't like and then see the reaction on the on the fans' faces when yeah, yeah. they concede a goal yeah, yeah. late on. Oh, it's heaven. Well, right. we've got a big game tomorrow, Coventry. We've got Leeds United. Ooh, oh, ooh. That's an early kickoff, no? No, three o'clock. No, oh, right. Yeah, right. No, it's a yeah, yeah. 
So, Trish can, was asking for tips for the Grand National, but you said you're going to do fancies next week. Yeah, I'll do. Trish, it's, it's too early. I'll do. We'll do a couple. Of, I'll do a couple of fancies myself, and uh, we'll get Lee Sobot. But I've also got another. I've got another geezer that uh, I met in the Monte Cristo a few weeks ago. Lovely fella, and he's we call, he's calling himself like Beverly Bryan, all right? Beverly, which is the race course, and Bryan, which is obviously his first name, not Beverly of the way round. And he's very clever. He's Bryan he, race course is pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, Bryan race, that's a good shake. <laughs> he gave me that four to one winner two weeks ago, and that was his fancy. He's very he reads he reads all the um, the form and everything. Clever man, and um, Kieran Fallon riding for Mark Johnston. The last it was finished like a train, won it four to one. So we've had a couple of good winners lately. We had that four to one. We had a, a two to one uh, two weeks ago. And we had a five to two last week. So we're starting to get um, starting to get a few winners now. So it's looking good. Looking good. Um what's the time? Is it are we getting any time? Yeah, three minutes to go. Ali three minutes gone. Valley Sun Alan from Valley San Lorenzo. Oh morning, Alan. Big Cov fan. See you soon, Macron. Quickly, have you a prediction for Coventry v Leeds? Oh dear me. Listen to <laughs> listen. Again, it, Draw. We we beat Othersfield 3 1 last week on Easter Friday. Then we took on Cardiff on Monday and lost 2 1, being 1 0 up. Very disappointing. But I, I, don't, I think we gave them too much respect. Um, 67, Webby. You don't look it. It's Craig and Nigel. Look, you look fantastic for 67, bro. Well, thank you very much. And then, I'll be, I will be 67 in August if I live that long. And then some jokers, but it's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> yeah, well, that was me. Sorry. That was you. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just super. Right, listen, we're going to finish this now. Have you had a good time today, Big? Yeah, man? fantastic. Yeah. Listen, as I said, that um, because nobody has to come on the show, so I'll get you on. But well, that's but, it. Yeah, another but, 14 said no, so I was the last on the list. No, that's fine. Yeah. No. You're good doing it. You're, you know, you're you're quite a natural sat there with me. Yeah. You do as you're told, which is what everybody needs to be doing yeah. when, I'm, when I'm in the chair. I think he's talking about me. Who oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, know, I know that. And Tim does a fantastic job for me. He may turn up a little bit late sometimes because we can't park the car. That's yeah. why it's always parking the car down here, isn't it, Tim? It is. Yeah. That's why I walk down. I'm waiting yeah. for Dawn. Dawn's coming down with uh, with Nico in a minute and Buster. So we're going to be finished uh, in a couple of minutes' time. Right, let's wrap this up, shall we? Um, right, let's see what we got for... Um, uh, tonight, are we? Um, am I invited to? Am I coming down tonight? Am I or what? I'll be there if you want to. Come is anybody you got anybody else down tonight? Uh, nobody's registered, but it's uh, so if, if if nobody's registered, uh, obviously Tim living with MS in Tel Aviv has his own YouTube channel. He's the one that got me onto my sports uh channel. He's on it 650, 555, bigger, but 555 tonight. And I go on for 10 15 minutes. We have a bit of fun, we have a laugh, we have a couple of sherbets together, and we enjoy it. So if you want to tune into that, that's live again. So come on to Tim's channel. I want to thank my big pal. Okay. Still you got bad time. right hand. Your bad so. right hand. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for today. That's all right. Yeah. Um, just keep Friday morning vacant. Yeah. Just, just I'd say if another 14 can't make it, I'll be here. But you do what? It's fantastic. So all I'm going to say is many thank you. Many thanks to everybody that's, uh, that's uh, I've ch oh, talking about the devil. I'm just finishing now. Thank God for that. Here's the boss now. Actually, oh, she hasn't brought Buster down with only Nico. So, uh, morning. Yeah, the boss is in. Go on, get her on, get her on. Yeah. <laughs> Nico. Yeah. Oh, look, there's the boss. Oh, no, oh, there's, there's Buster with Christine. Yeah. This is live. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Nico. Come on, come and see Uncle Webby. Yeah. Is he okay? Oh, yeah, mate. How are you, pal? You all right? You get it? You, we'll have oh. a cough. We'll have, oh, he, he, yeah. Yeah, tea and cake. We'll have him in a minute. We'll sort him out in a minute. And we'll have a little walk, all right? Okay, you do that. Right, listen, all I'm going to say now is um, thank you for everybody tuning in this morning. Um, any more comments, please put them on. Obviously, if you're on catch up yourself. Thank you for Foggy for my Facebook page, all the work he does. So we need to up the ante on the Facebook page. Webby Sports Roundup. If you haven't gone on there, please do it for me. Thank you for everybody else. All the work for Tim, for the main man here. And what else can I say? If you haven't subscribed, please, we're going here and there now. We're going on there. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to Webby Sports Run. It is free. Hit the like button. And it's as simple as that. We're in my manor, Kalosovaki, with Laura's bar. We'll be in Monte Cristo later on uh, this evening. I'll come on for a few minutes with a couple of bottles of beer uh, with our Tim. Just want to thank him for everything. And um, don't forget, check out the vlogs I've done this week. Hoops Bar, Rangers Bar, 
which is the Ibrox bar. Check out Thursday with Terry, my number two, Simon, my number three. Do a fantastic football job. I'm going to get, within the next week or two, just getting close to the end of the season, I'm going to get the boys, especially Simon, but he's clever on his football, I'm going to talk about Division 1 and Division 2. Who's top, who's bottom, who's going to get relegated. Because I know there's a lot of uh, viewers out there that follow these, the smaller clubs in the smaller divisions. Um, especially like Bolton Wanderers. At the re it's at the Reebok stage, isn't it? Okay, so all I'm going to say now, that's it from me, Webby. Until next time, you have a fantastic weekend. Don't forget, hit the likes, check on the two. I rocks and the hoops bar. Who is going to be number one Scottish football club in Scotland? Is it Rangers or is it Celtic? Get them views. Sort it, boys and girls. Okay, and I will see you next time. From me, Webby, Toddy and Tim, I'll see you soon. Take care. Oh.